Hey everyone, I'm Miles Ryan, and today we're going to be talking about the top five preventive maintenance tasks you can perform on your building automation systems to improve occupant comfort, system performance, and save on the wear and tear of your pieces of equipment. Now, these tasks are not all encompassing, but we feel they're the most cost effective for building performance. Task number one is reviewing operating schedules. If you have a building automation system that controls a lot of mechanical systems like the ones we're seeing here in this mechanical room, it's important to review the operating schedules as configured on the building automation system on maybe a quarterly, monthly, or even weekly basis. We're in a middle school here and school schedules change from week to week. We have long summer breaks, we have winter break, we have spring break. It's important to be reviewing these operating schedules of these systems on a quite frequent basis to make sure that the operating schedules match the occupancy schedules of that facility. So it's on the building automation system that these can be configured. Take a look at it. In this particular case, we have a chilled water system. It's allowed to operate seven days a week to include Saturday and Sunday. That might be appropriate for this upcoming Saturday and Sunday, but there might be some Saturdays and Sundays in the future where this facility is gonna be completely empty. In addition to that, not only reviewing the schedules, it's good to use building automation systems to get the feedback to know that the systems are actually disabling when they're supposed to. So I know from this operating schedule that this chilled water system shouldn't have been running this past night. I could go back and look on the automation system and look at last night's trends to make sure that indeed the chiller was disabled when I thought it was supposed to be. There are times when you might find it otherwise. Maybe the system was operating in hand or maybe there's some sort of glitch in the automation of that system. Task number two would be to review the set points that your systems are operating at. Do they make sense? These set points are oftentimes adjustable on the user interface of the building automation system. And oftentimes, set points that the systems are operating to get changed to inappropriate values. So what would be appropriate values? Well, some values would be documented in the design documentation. Some values would be documented by a testing, adjusting, and balancing contractor during the construction phase in their final report. Some building automation systems have the ability to flag when a set point has deviated from what it should be. In this particular case, we have secondary hot water pumps on this heating hot water system, which controls a differential pressure set point of five PSI differential. If someone was to ever come in here and deviate from five, this system has a cool feature, which will set up a flag to say, hey, the default value of five, which was determined during the construction phase by the testing, adjusting, and balancing contractor, Someone's deviated from that value. And they're gonna send a flag to the building operator to say, you're probably not operating at the correct differential pressure set point. That's an awesome feature of this particular building automation system. They don't all have it. So there's other ways to, to communicate what the appropriate value is to the building operator. One way would be to add text next to every set point saying what the appropriate value should be. And during their weekly or daily reviews of these screens, they can compare set points to what the values should be and make adjustments as necessary. Task number three would be to review all the sensor readings on the building automation system. There's a lot of sensors out there in our facilities that dictate the operation of our various mechanical systems. We need to make sure that those sensors are reporting accurately. Here we have a heating hot water system and we have a bunch of sensors. A critical one would be the outdoor air temperature sensor. The outdoor air temperature depending on its reading will dictate whether or not the system runs and when it's running, what temperature of water we're gonna be operating at. So it's a pretty critical sensor. So it's good to do a sanity check every so often on that sensor. I could do a sanity check on that outdoor air temperature sensor just by pulling up my phone, pulling up the weather app and comparing my reading on the weather app to the local reading here. If it deviates greatly, maybe the sensor location is not appropriate and it's getting too much sun. Or maybe the sensor has fallen out of calibration and needs to be either calibrated or replaced. Additionally, there's other sensors, like the sensors in the hot water system that the boilers are controlling to. You can use local gauges, thermometers, pressure gauges to compare sensor readings on the building automation system to what you're seeing in the field. All right, now we're gonna head to another building and it's building automation system to take a look at our remaining two tasks, manual overrides, as well as alarm log review. The fourth task you should be performing on your building automation systems is to occasionally review the graphics for overrides on certain pieces of equipment. Now, 
Using a build automation system's user interface to override certain pieces of equipment on or off or certain valves open or close, despite what the sequence of operation is calling for, is a functionality that gives great flexibility to the building operator. However, these overrides have the tendency of remaining in place far longer than they should. So it's good to take an occasional look at your graphics, identify when overrides are in place, and do a sanity check. Is that appropriate or not? In this particular case, we have chiller number one manually disabled. Even if the sequence of operations was calling for this particular chiller to be enabled, it would not be in this case because it's, we have it overridden off. There is a reason for that that is appropriate right now for this particular system, but if it wasn't, it would be something we would want to release that override. Similarly, overrides can occur at the pieces of equipment themselves. Here we have the building automation system trying to enable this particular pump, but at the handoff auto switch, it's been overridden off. If we put it back in auto, that allows the building automation system to actually carry out its sequence of operation as intended. So just because you have a building automation system dictating the operation of all your mechanical systems in your building, don't just stay at the computer. Go in the field, look at these pieces of equipment, and make sure that, that they're not locally overridden one way or the other. The fifth preventative maintenance task you need to be performing on your building automation systems is a daily review of the alarm log. The alarm log is generated on the building automation system's user interface, and daily you should be logging into that, looking at what alarms have been generated and when they were generated. A lot of times alarms come in at night or on the weekends when the building operator isn't there. It's good to investigate those and don't just say, oh, it went into alarm. Is it still an alarm? If so, go figure out what's happening. If not, do some investigation, trend review to figure out what went wrong. Because oftentimes you're gonna find um, improvements that can be made, tweaks that can be made to the building automation system that can improve operational efficiency and save you energy. Thank you for watching the top five preventative maintenance tasks for your building automation systems. If you liked what you learned, please subscribe to our channel.